On July 29th, Apple CEO Tim Cook testified before the House Judiciary Committee that the App Store doesn't discriminate when it comes to approving and supporting new programs. Here he is answering a question from Representative Hank Johnson. Sir, we treat every developer the same. We have open uh, and transparent rules. It's a rigorous process. It only took nine days for Apple to prove him completely, absolutely, ridiculously wrong. The antitrust hearing was a massive spectacle with CEOs from four of the largest U.S. technology companies, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple, answering questions about their power and policies for five hours straight. They also had to talk about perceived political bias on Twitter for some reason. It was reported that uh, Donald Trump Jr. got taken down for a period of time because he put something up on the efficacy of hydroxychloroquine. Congressman, well, first to be clear, I think what you might be referring to happened on, on Twitter, so it's hard for me to speak to that. Each company was ostensibly there to answer for its unique brand of anti-competitive practices. Cook was there to defend Apple against accusations that the company regularly steamrolls rival developers on the App Store, which operates as a monopoly on the iOS platform. Apple is the guardian of both the App Store and iOS, the operating system that powers 1.5 billion devices across the globe. Cook's message on July 29th was clear. The App Store doesn't favor or block any programs for Apple's own gain. Sir, we treat every developer the same. We have open uh, and transparent rules. It's a rigorous process. Because we care so deeply about privacy and security and quality, we do look at every app before it goes on. Uh, but those apps, those rules apply evenly to everyone. And then, on August 7th, Apple had to publicly explain why it was blocking xCloud, Stadia, GeForce Now, and other cloud gaming platforms from the App Store. Essentially, Apple said these services can exist on the App Store as long as they submit each game on the storefront for individual review, and include these titles in charts and search. This is a highly restrictive rule, considering xCloud alone has more than 100 games, with new additions rolling in all the time. Meanwhile, non-gaming streaming services like Netflix, YouTube, and Spotify are free to operate on the App Store without these restrictions. In effect, Apple is treating some developers very differently than others. Microsoft pulled the xCloud preview app from iOS in early August, and on the 7th, it released a scathing statement about Apple's approach to cloud gaming. A spokesperson told Engadget, Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass. And it consistently treats gaming apps differently, applying more lenient rules to non-gaming apps even when they include interactive content. Microsoft isn't the only developer calling out Apple's hypocrisy in recent days. Just before the hearing, Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, criticized both Apple and Google for operating an absolute monopoly over their respective app stores. He blamed Apple's inherent anti-competitive practices for keeping the Epic Games Store off of iOS and lambasted the company's app store revenue sharing structure. This fee system, which applies to prices and in-app purchases, is likely the main reason Apple is reluctant to allow third-party storefronts on iOS. In general, Apple collects 30% of an app's revenue in its first year on the store and 50% afterward. When Cook says, 84% of the time it's zero. He's talking about free-to-play programs with no in-app purchases, which tend to rely on integrated ads to generate a return. 30% is high. Developers have been increasingly vocal about the unsustainable nature of a 30-70 revenue split, and Apple's policy is under investigation by the EU on the behalf of Spotify. If an app allows users to purchase an item outside of the App Store's payment processing system, Apple doesn't get a cut of the sale. With this in mind, Apple's opposition to Stadia is clear, since players have to purchase games before streaming them on Google's storefront. However, xCloud offers a lineup of games to stream for free, much like Netflix or Spotify. In this case, Apple's opposition to Microsoft's streaming service is more about the big picture. Throughout his testimony, Cook repeated the idea that Apple doesn't enjoy a dominant market share in any part of its business. When asked about the unchecked power that Apple has to change revenue sharing prices for developers on the App Store, Cook flipped the question sideways and answered it as a platform issue. For developers 
They can write their apps for Android or Windows or Xbox or PlayStation. So we had fierce competition at the developer side and the customer side, which is a which is essentially it's so competitive. I would describe it as a street fight for market share in the smartphone business. Okay, Tim. Though Android is gaining ground, iOS has historically represented more than half of the overall mobile gaming market, bringing in more revenue than Google Play and third-party Android storefronts combined. And within the iOS ecosystem, Apple makes all the rules. The company has specifically blocked Stadia and xCloud from tapping into the iOS gaming market, which was worth $33.5 billion last year, according to Nuzu. Meanwhile, Cook just listed a handful of Apple's largest competitors, and both Google and Microsoft were on it. Microsoft even made the cut twice. Minutes before I started recording this video, Apple banned Epic's largest game, Fortnite, from the App Store after Epic added a prompt allowing players to pay the company directly and at a discount. It was a calculated move, as Epic immediately announced it was suing Apple over anti-competitive behavior, and released a video parodying Apple's iconic 1984 commercial. This power is ours and ours alone. We shall prevail. The thing is, we've seen Apple bend the App Store rules in specific cases, most notably for one of the other companies at the antitrust hearing, Amazon. While most apps have to implement clunky web workarounds in order to use their own payment services on iOS, in April, the Prime Video app added direct purchases through Amazon, completely sidestepping Apple's fees. Apple said it was part of an existing program that allows premium subscription video entertainment providers to sell directly to users on the App Store, but the policy is rarely used and shrouded in mystery to even the most avid Apple followers. So to bring it all back around, this. We treat every developer the same. We have open uh, and transparent rules. Sounds like bullshit, especially for gaming apps. For all the latest gaming news and for updates on that epic storyline that's unfolding, stay tuned to Engadget.com and subscribe to the Engadget YouTube.